It's Kevin from KDW Mixing Mastering. Just a quick video today on uh, Kensington Trackball Mouse and how I use it in Cubase and what I've done to modify it to work uh, the way I think it should work. When I first got one and put it in, it seemed to do things a little bit backwards to what I would like in Cubase. And um, so I had to do some special stuff to rectify that. Uh, so here's a picture of the mouse I'm talking about. It's a trackball. Around the ball, it has a scroll wheel that you sort of turn. Okay, so when you look at Cubase, and I have a window here, if I scroll, I turn the scroll wheel to the right, so clockwise, it goes down. If I go anti-clockwise to the left, it goes up. Okay, now if I want to go left and right, what happens is if I scroll to the right clockwise it actually goes backwards to the left if I scroll to the left anti-clockwise it goes to the right okay and this to me is backwards okay so one way to fix that problem is to go to your trackball application and you can set up a profile for the application as in Cubase here and then you can switch the button around like that okay but the problem with that is so if I hold the shift key I turn left any clockwise it now goes left and right clockwise it goes right that makes sense but what happens now is when I go left anti-clockwise it goes down without the shift modifier modifier and if I go right clockwise it goes up so that then becomes backwards so with that application you have to decide which one do you want to be backwards which I don't want either I want them both to be the same but the right way so let's put that back to its normal setting so we are back to we have the up and down working the way I like okay but the left and right is backwards there's no setting that I have found in Cubase to fix this. I have no idea why Steinberg have programmed it this way. It seems backwards to me. It just seems wrong. Uh, but maybe in uh, Germany where they create this program, maybe they do things slightly differently. Maybe other countries as well. Maybe I'm backwards. Who knows? So the way I solved this is I got a program called XMouse Button Control. And in that you can add profiles. So I have a profile here called Cubase 8.5. Okay, and you basically add a new one. You find your application, which you'll see here, add it, and I will tick it to turn it on. And this program has all of these different layers here. So you can create more layers, less layers, whatever you want. So we have a layer one, which is a default. In this layer, I don't do anything, okay? And we have a general scrolling and navigation as well. Here, again, I could invert the scrolling function, but I don't want to do that because I don't want it to affect everything. So I'm not changing any of the settings here, the default settings at all. I'm not changing the layer one. So this is the default layer that is used all the time, okay? Then we have a couple of extra layers. So I have added a layer 2, and what I have changed here is the wheel up, I switch to do wheel down, and the wheel down to wheel up. Okay, now you might think, well, how does that work? What happens is, if you go into the settings here, and you go to modify keys, what I have here is if I hold the shift key, it activates layer 2. Okay. If I hold the control key, it activates layer 3. If I hold the alt key, it activates layer 4. Now you can set those to whatever you like. Okay, but I will show you what the other layers do as well. Right, so remember layer 3 is control, layer 4 is alt, layer 2 is shift. So when we would use in Cubase before, when we would scroll up and down, we would not hold any modifier key. 
Okay, so that would be the default layer. When we want to scroll left and right in Cubase, we hold the shift key down with the scroll wheel. Now, as I set up in there, if I hold the shift key down, I activate layer two. So when layer two gets activated, holding the shift key, it swaps the wheel up to wheel down and the wheel down to wheel up. So what that means is this. If I don't hold the modifier key and I go up and down, if I go right clockwise, it goes down. If I go left anti-clockwise, it goes up. Now if I hold the shift key, if I go right clockwise, it goes right. If I hold the shift key and I go left anti-clockwise, it goes left. That is exactly the way I want it. So now I had that program is fixing the issue that I have. So you remember to switch to layer three, I held the control key. What I did in layer three is, again, I do the wheel up is wheel down, and wheel down is wheel up. Now the reason for that is, is because the control key, when you hold the control key in Cubase, it zooms in and out. Okay, horizontally. And again, that was backwards. So by me doing the layer three function, I have now changed the direction again, same method as I did with the shift key, but with the control key, so now it's zooming in the direction that I want as well. Now layer four, I held the alt key down. Okay, so to activate layer four, I hold the alt key down and I move my scroll wheel. And what I've done in here is I've now got wheel up, simulates the key press of alt G and the wheel down simulates the pre-key press of Alt H. Okay, and if you go into Cubase, what I do is now, as I scroll, holding the Alt key, it is zooming up, well, it's zooming vertically. So I can zoom vertically by holding the Alt key now. Okay, which I don't believe is a function you can normally do in Cubase, and that's why I have it simulating those key presses. So I think if you go into key commands, you will see here that zoom out vertically is Alt G, and zoom in vertically is Alt H. That was one of the bugbears I had with the scroll function on the Kensington mouse when using Cubase specifically. Never had this problem in other programs like Pro Tools or anything like that. It was just Cubase. So for some reason, Steinberg made a choice to do things slightly backwards with their zoom functions, in my opinion. And I fixed that by having this X mouse button. And it just sits there running on the taskbar all the time. I never have to worry about it. It's always there and it's always functioning. So if you've got a Kensington mouse, and uh, you have that issue and uh, don't like it either, check this out, check out my solution. Uh, if you've got any questions about how I do something in this, you know, put it in the comments and I'll reply, but uh, hopefully I've explained it pretty well. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.